Alrighty boys, it's engine building time yet again. I uh, have recently returned from a vacation. I was hoping to get this done before I left, but it really wasn't in the cards and now I'm back. So I'm kind of in a crunch to get this thing back together. Uh, hopefully I'm gonna make this the last video uh, on this engine build. What we need to do is get the oil pan on, flip this thing over, get the cylinder heads on, and bolt it down along with the front timing cover and then I'm going to turn this uh, project back over to Dave and he's going to put it back on the transmission and then back up into the Monte Carlo. So that's uh, sort of the way we're working this one. Uh, first thing I want to do though is we're going to flip this over and I'm going to break clean all of my paint marks off. That way we're not running paint uh, through the oil system. And I realize that's kind of counterproductive but I needed to paint mark these in order to measure uh, all of my final torques or to, uh, to ensure that I actually did uh, finalize the torque uh, on all of these fasteners. It is the proper protocol. I probably could have done it without the paint, but like I said, I wanted to be nice and thorough with it. So let's go fetch some brake clean. We'll spray this business off, get rid of the paint, roll it back over, and uh, we're gonna get the heads on. We're gonna drop in Actually, you know what I think I want to do? I think I'm going to put the oil pan, I'll do the oil pan and front cover first. Uh, reason being is I'm going to be dumping oil down inside of here, inside of all these lifter bores. I'm going to be dumping oil on the camshaft in there, and I don't want that oil to just be running out of the uh, bottom of the block. So we're going to spray it off, flip it back, or yeah, spray it off, flip it back over, put the oil pan on, oil pan gaskets going on, and then uh, we'll flip it one more time and get the uh, cylinder heads bolted back on. So stay tuned because this is gonna be a very good final part of this engine build series. All right, let's get this party started here with some uh, washing action. There we go. Spray off all that paint, that way we don't contaminate our break-in oil. Now, like I said, break-in oil, I, I am gonna do a, a break in oil oil change on this but again I'd really rather not let the uh, let all my paint contaminate the oil because it probably won't hurt but I'm certain that it won't help so we're just gonna get rid of all of our witness marks here and make this unshiny again or or we are making it shiny again yeah, it's more shinier and less shinier, depending on how you define shiny. There we go. All right, that's good to go. Let's uh, let's roll it over again and uh, blow it off real quick with some compressed shop air, and then we'll uh, we'll get that oil pan back together. Before I do such things, though, I do want to give this another kind of a spray. There was a bit of dust floating around in here and I can see some of it on the top of the pistons here so I am gonna hose this off a little bit with the air gun loud noises re shiny achieved okay Let's give it another roll around here. Bottoms up. Hmm. I didn't get all the paint off of there, but I got a decent amount of it. I'll live with that. Okay, coming in with some 530 oil. We're just gonna give this a splash on all these uh, connecting rods and other lubricated surfaces here. There we go. gonna spill a boatload of it but that's fine okay splash lubrication has been achieved okie doke so first things first let's get our windage tray and the engine oil pan in position it's marked front but I don't know if it goes here nope yeah I do know because it doesn't fit there so windage tray goes right there. We've got six 13 millimeter nuts that are pinch lock nuts. Let's get those guys on. Then we'll bolt the uh, oil pan, oil pump to the uh, front of the engine here. Nuts coming in. Let's get these guys in position here. I'm not gonna tighten them yet because I need to fit the oil pickup tube. There we go. 
I said six nuts, it's eight nuts. Yeah, my, my brain's still misfiring. It's eight nuts, the Ocho, not six nuts. Well, that was dumb. I dropped my uh, my bolt down in there on top of that piston. Hmm. Go in there with a magnet here. Let's see if I can't fish it out. Come here, bolt. There she is. Okay, back on schedule. It is so hard to get my head back in the game, guys. So hard. It's like the, the muscle memory stopped functioning. That's what it is. Okay, oil pump. Let's get it clocked right on that keyway. Almost. A little pocket driver here. sitting flush that's good let's throw the bolts in it bolt this thing to the front of the block that's the one that fell down in the hole okay four bolts on the oil pump like so let's go ahead and run them down Mini clicks. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna have to get the uh, oil pickup tube installed next. If we set it in position here, we learn quickly that uh, there's an interference over that fastener there. So, what we're gonna do, tighten all these guys down. Come here. There is a uh, new O-ring that's been installed on this tube. I always put a new O-ring on there. These things suffered from a uh, loss of oil pressure issue due to the O-rings flattening out and they would suck in air right here at the connection at the pump. So always do a new O-ring. And then the 10 mil that fastens the tube to the actual pump that guy on next. Oh, silly rabbit. I grabbed an 11. Slippage. Massive slippage. That's fine. A 10 mil and my zero drive will save the day. There we go. Okie doke, so timing cover's next. Now, if you guys recall from this old timing cover, somebody had massively over torqued the bottom bolts and they actually broke the, uh, the aluminum inside of this cover. So uh, I had to purchase a replacement cover, which is fine because it came with new bolts and you can see that is not broken off. That's the reason we had to put a new cover on it. And this cover also comes with the camshaft, I think that's a cam position sensor, I believe. Yeah, so let's get this guy kind of lined up and in position here. Get a couple of the bolts in it. There we go. These are all 10 mil bolts. We'll get them started and then run them down. And uh, just like the rear cover, we're not gonna make them super tight because we have to draw these covers up onto the oil pan in order to create the seal across the uh, the bottoms of the covers and the top of the pan. So we torque down the pan first, then we do the front and rear covers. Does that make sense? Good. So let's just go ahead and run these bolts in. Again, no torque, just, uh, I'm just gonna run them down.
There we go. Okay, it's oil pan time. Let's go on over here and get the gasket set up. Okay, so before the gasket goes on, we need to apply some sealant to uh, these areas right here where there's a transition from the block to the front cover as well as the rear cover. If not, oil will wick its way through that little gap right there and it will cause a leak. And this is clear seal. I'm not using this. I don't use clear. No, 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 no. It came. Oh, never mind. It's gray. Look at that. Okay. That was like the, uh, the leftovers at the top. Kind of like when you squirt your mustard and a bunch of mustard water comes out. That's what it was. It was separated sealant. Yeah, I was not about to put clear silicone on an engine. No, 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 no. I don't like the clear. I don't like the blue or the orange for that matter either. It tends to indicate like hackery from time to time because it's the cheapest stuff you can possibly buy. And so, uh, no offense, but a lot of the DIY guys end up using the, the blue or the orange and uh, it is not preferable to say the least. So anyway, the gasket is now in place. Let's get the pan and drop that down and then we'll start to throw some fasteners onto this unit oil pan coming in it's been cleaned made nice and shiny inside and out no sludge no oil no dirt none of that good stuff so we're gonna drop this guy on bolts are in let's start running them down and then we'll come back by and torque wrench them in a moment clicks free clicks These ones pass all the way through and go into the rear cover. So these longer bolts are the ones that are gonna draw this cover up to the oil pan. See that? Drawing it right in. Beautiful. Okay. All right, torque wrench time. We're looking for 216 inch pounds of torque. Click. Ooh, that's good clickage. Here, let's uh, turn this some because I'm gonna do like a pattern here back and forth. Oh, that one's loose again. There we go. And we'll get some on the other side. Clickage. Okay. Front side again, or far side, or this side, right side. You know what I mean, the other side. I already got that one. Let's get that one out back over there. And then it's counterpart right down. Oh, there is no counterpart on this side, okay. That's good, so these two in the rear, I believe those were 206 inch pounds, so I need to back off my wrench. Those are the long ones. Uh, negative, it's 106, 106 inch pounds. That's why you always find these when they're stripped out. Like it, dudes will do an oil pan on it and they'll over tighten those long bolts, pull the threads out of the cover, and then it relaxes the mating surface between the pan and the cover, causes massive leaks, which is no bueno. All right, moving back around to the rear cover, now we can apply some torque to these bolts and tighten this guy up to the uh, block itself. Remember earlier in the uh, previous videos, I just ran these fasteners down and did not apply any torque to them, so now, that it's been mated with the uh, oil pan, we can actually tighten these up. 
Then we'll go around to the front cover and uh, perform a similar procedure. There we go. It's a tight squeeze down in there. There we go. Couple more. It's a close quarters combat down in there. I'll tell you guys what. If you're failing to get it get it right, you slip and bust a knuckle, which sucks. There we go. I'm like bear hugging this engine right now. Come on, Titan. Gonna make me get bored. Tight. That one's tight. I think I've got them all. Let's move around to the, uh, the front cover next. Get that front side handled. Okie dokes, let's move around back to the front side here. Let's get some torque action on uh, the bolts that will draw the front cover. There we go. That's gonna draw the front cover up into the pan. And now we can tighten the cover down to the front of the block. Let's get it seated. Clicks. The clicks are disturbed by a 6.7 Ford that A-Rod's working on. Sorry if you can't hear my click action. I know you guys like the clickages. There we go. And last one, I think. Yep. Nope. Yep. Sure, all right, good to go. Front cover is installed, oil pan's installed. Let's, uh, I wanna pull the drain plug out of it because I'm gonna be dumping more oil down into this thing. And then, um, here, get rid of that. Yeah, I will be dumping in more rinse oil, so I don't want to uh, let it accumulate in the pan, so we'll let that drain out with the uh, drain plug removed. Okay, so I'll throw a, uh, a drain pan down there and we'll spin this engine around one more time. That's gonna let the oil drain out, whatever's been accumulating. Woo! Got away from me there. So now any oil that I dump down into this uh, crankcase will make its way out of the bottom. So we really have no point or purpose or reason to uh, have this top side right here exposed. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the, uh, the manifold cover bolted on right now, I think. I call it a manifold because it's called the VLOM and that's where, that's the manifold for the DOD, the displacement on demand slash AFM. See how that top plate has these solenoids here designed to direct oil to the AFM slash DOD lifters in order to turn this engine from a V8 into a four cylinder. And again, we are, uh, we're removing that feature and just making this kind of uh, uh, an old school baseline type of engine. So that being said, I don't need to have that cover on here, I don't think. So uh, let's go ahead and get that thing set down into position and bolt it on. So we've got a new cover. You can see it's got gaskets here, 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 and here. And those are designed to plug up the oil passages that run to the lifters. And this cover came with new bolts. Hello, darling. Hey. What you got there? Uh, water. You're bringing, you're bringing water for me? Thank yes. you, dear. It's hot out. Are you trying to keep me alive? Thank you.
No, I want it back. I want more. I want more water. Thank you. Let's give it some zip zaps with the gun here. Beautiful. Torquage time. Right on. Let's just check a couple of these one more time. Very good. All right, we're all set here. Okay, so in preparation to get the cylinder heads on, we're gonna need to drop the lifters in with the lifter baskets, get those guys bolted together, and uh, then we can get the head gasket on and then bolt the heads down. However, before we bolt the heads down, we need to chase the threads for all the head bolts. Reason being is that the head bolts on this engine have like a built-in Loctite on them. See that right there? What we do not want to do is run more Loctite on these new bolts into that engine with old Loctite potentially still down the hole. So we're gonna chase those with a thread tap real quick and just clean out the threads. We'll blow them out with some air, and then uh, we can proceed to install the lifters and then uh, again the cylinder heads. Do I have a 10 mil Allen bit something? I don't know. Yeah, take a look. Uh, the toolbox on the right hand side, that's already getting caught up in there. It better be the right one. So here, let's see. Do a thread match. Yeah, it's the right one. There's just a bunch of nasty down inside of there. That's what it is. Bottomed out. Back it out. Next one. Yeah, look at how much nasty he's coming out of those threads. See that? Yeah, definitely needed a thread chase. Next. Look at all that. You mean to tell me I didn't do this to mine? You didn't do this to yours? Oh. Your engine's gonna blow up. If you didn't run a thread chase down it, it's gonna blow up. You're gonna blow up head gaskets. Are these your new pistons? No. I dipped these pistons in that five gallon bucket of chem dip back there. Dude, those look great. They were covered in disgusting nasty. What do you think about that crosshatch hone job? Crosshatch? The, yeah. They, the internet's told me it looked like rooster scratches. I think well what the internet can't tell from this angle is that these look like great crosshatch patterns. I I think so like I'll run them. I mean they said they were rooster scratches look, but you can tell that they're clearly like this. It's an optical illusion because they're looking into a circular bore. That's why. I I think the camera with the lighting makes them look more profound than they are. They are there. Trust me. They are there. They are, yeah. I think they're fine but you know what are you going to do? Anyway, uh, that half has been cleaned out. Let's get the other side real quick like here. 
Same procedure. Yeah, look at all that nasty stuff came out of there. That's not okay. Watch this. Yeah, that's gross. Okay, more. Yeah, that one hooked up on some thread lock. Lauren be lurking. What are you doing, darling? I had a few questions for you. Yeah, you can't come over here without getting uh, uh, I know. getting called out on my video. I know. What kind yeah, of questions do you have? Water. Do we? Uh, I mean, probably not, but I'll drink more. I need to get my office for a moment. Do you now? I do. What are we gonna do in there? I need you need me to check out a, some paperwork for you? Yes, please. All right. Hang on. Intermission. Bear it back. You guys stay here. Okay, I return to find out I have 5% battery left, so we better uh, better make haste here. Get these other ones honed or tapped, chased. All these words to struggle with. On the way out, I'm pulling on the gun, by the way. That way we don't invite the opportunity for me to chip the leading edge of the threads. There we go. Okay, that's all the big holes. We need to run a chase down the little holes and then uh, and we should be prepped to uh, get the heads on. Yay. There we go. Nasty. Real quick, since I am up here working over this uh, exposed engine internals, I'm gonna shove some towels in there just in case any pieces of aluminum wanna fall down in the hole. I don't want them to do that. Okay, come back in. And away we go yet again. That one felt pretty clean. That one had some thread lock in it. I felt it hook up halfway down. Cool? Yeah, it's nasty. It takes a patient hand to do this with a drill. One must not attempt to just go after one of these, especially if you don't have like a, like a cordless drill that's variable speed. You do that with a non-variable speed drill and you're liable to tear some threads up in the worst ways. And that would be bad. Okay, so don't do it. Oh, I forgot my towels on the side. Like I said, I'm trying to get back into the swing of things and my crane branium is still on vacation mode. Or I'm just like really, really, really hung over. <laughs> Kidding, I'm, I'm not, I'm really not. It could be, get like a three day hangover, four day hangover. There she is. So now, take some compressed air and we're gonna go through all these bolt holes and blow them out. Loud noises. Uh, I don't 
hour now. What time is it? Uh, like 12.45. 12.45? When do they want to come get it? Beautiful. That's all the nasty that came out from the holes when I blew the air out. Look at that. That's gross. So we'll pull these guys out. Shiny. All right, boys. Now it's time to get the lifters in position. So I've got the... Uh, the whole set of lifters hanging out inside of an oil bath here. See those guys? Let's get those dropped down into their cups and then we will uh, insert them into place in the engine block. I call these cups. I believe the proper name is like a basket, like a lifter basket. You can see it's a, it's a roller unit, a little needle bearings in there. And they're gonna sit right here in these guides, in these guides slash baskets slash cups, prevent the lifters from rotating in the bore. So we're gonna set these units right inside of there like so. And then drop them down into their home. Uh, real quick, I'm gonna drop some assembly lube down in there. Hmm. Couldn't hurt. Okay, let's pick these guys up, line them up, drop them down. Beautiful. Okay, that's one set. Throw some lube in that hole. I'll just give it a squirt instead of trying it with my flangey. That works. See little notches, has to fit that uh, that cutout in the block right there. Take that guy, wiggle it in, and we're looking for two bolts to bolt these baskets down to the block. Now the bolts are actually like a specialized fastener. See that shoulder right there on it? That shoulder is designed to fit inside of the hole in that basket. And when you tighten down the, uh, the bolt, it does not tighten down against the basket, it tightens down against the aluminum of the block. So fastener tightness has nothing to do with clamping force. The clamping force is predetermined by the clearances. Click. And there we go. Good to go. Okay, next we have these uh, two dowel pins that are going to press into the block. And those are what is going to uh, correctly align the cylinder head and the cylinder head gasket. So all we've got to do here, take a hammer, tap them down in there. They bottom out fairly easily. Good to go. Ooh. Piece of towel. Get that out of here. Okie dokes. So I think we're about ready to get this cylinder head on. Let's drop the gasket down. It's labeled front. They uh, they appear to be symmetrical, and you could get them backwards. So they do label these now front side and back side. So gasket's on. It's a multi-layer steel gasket. Let's go ahead and get the cylinder head dropped down into place, and then we can uh, get the bolts in. 
Okay, cylinder head coming in. Drop that down. It just wiggled into the, the dowel pins. So let's drop our fasteners in. Okay, 10 new head bolts. What I'll do is I'll drop them in, grab a tool, run them down, and then we can uh, torque them to specified specifications. Um, it should be noted that I've already gone over to the other side of the engine and dropped all the lifters in. Figured we could save a little bit of time. There we go. So there's the bolts. Need to get the five smaller bolts for the top side and then we'll get these things torqued. Next set. Drop them in. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, let's run down these 15s. I've just got the little quarter inch driver here. That should be sufficient to bottom them out. Real smooth with those threads being chased. How about that? Get on there. Excellent. Okay, let's get those little guys up at the top. We'll run those down. Mini clicks. And since uh, since I have the lifters in on the other side over yonder, let's just go ahead and toss that head on right now because that is going to uh, seal this engine up all the way and there's no longer a chance for uh, contamination within which would be really cool. Let's blow it out one last time, make sure there's no dirt in there. Very good. Gasket coming in, set that down just like so, front facing forward. Here, you guys scooch over some, give me some space here. We'll take this head and drop that in. Ding, over the dowels, there we go. And now we can drop the bolts in, and we're getting, uh, it's starting to look like an engine again. Look at that. Okay, 10 big bolts, and then the five little ones. Drop all these units down in their home here. I'm getting excited. We're in the home stretch section. So as soon as this red car rolls out of here, I'm gonna bring the van in and then we'll pull the uh, subframe out of it and remove that engine. That was a little too tight. Let me back that one off. There we go. Switching back out to the 10. And I think I grabbed the 11. Yeah, that's an 11. Oh well, it'll work for what I'm doing. Beautiful. Now, let's torque this unit. Okie dokes, let's get these guys torqued down. So we've got, uh, there's a sequence here. We do three different passes. First pass is 22 foot-pounds of torque, then 90 degrees on the second pass, and then 70 degrees on the third pass. And what that's gonna do is stretch those bolts out to their maximum allowable uh, amount of stretch so that they're pre-stretched. That way, when the combustion process is occurring and it's trying to push this head off the block, the bolts will not be able to stretch anymore and allow the, uh, the head to move, thus blowing up the head gasket. So let's go run through these guys. Uh, 22 foot-pounds, and we'll save the five on the top, the little ones for later. So, got the clicky wrench out, 22 foot-pounds of torque, and there's also a sequence, naturally. So let me pull up that next photograph here. Come on. There we go. So it looks like we're doing, starting in the center. So there's a bolt numero uno. So we got one, two, one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. That's gonna be the sequence that we need to run. So let's start with uh, our center bolt. This is position number one, 22 foot pounds. Number two, three, That one's a little bit loose. There's five. Six. Seven. The ocho. And 10 over here on this side. Very good. So that one's preliminarily torqued. Let me just run over here real quick and we'll do this next side in 22 pounds as well. That way we've got some decent clamping force on these heads here. Let's see here. That's three, four, And number 10, there we go. Alrighty, switching out the wrench to the digital beeping wrench. We're moving up to 90 degrees. So we're gonna do the same fasteners, 90 degrees on our second pass. Ninety. That was actually ninety-one, but I'll live with it. Ninety. Number three. Where's number three at? That was two. Number three, you're right up here. Reset the wrench. Ninety. Four. Ninety, there we go. Ninety one, but I'll live with it. That was five. number six. <sighs> yeah, 92 degrees, but I'll live with it. That's number seven. Come around to the other side here. We'll do number eight. Ninety. There we go. Number nine. One more. There we go. Okay, that's our first pass at 90 degrees on these uh, primary head bolts. So since we've already done one torque sequence on this side, we're gonna run this down to 70. And we're gonna finish off this head so we can mark the, uh, we can mark the bolts and then we'll hit that other head. So we're down to 70 degrees on this one. This is where it gets really hard to do. 
50, 60, 70, I'll take 72. This is stretching. Oh, yeah. This is where you start to sweat. So what we're doing is stretching these bolts out. Woo! This is the part where you do not get interrupted. Nobody can come and bother me. 76, but I'll live with that one. That was number three. Bolt number four. Seventy degrees. Reset number five. Let's stretch it out. Six. Seven coming in. can feel these bolts stretching too. It's kind of unnerving to knowingly stretch out a bolt. Here we go. 70 degrees. Number nine. Oh yeah. Got it. One more. Yeah, that was number nine, I think. Here we go, last one. Fifty, sixty, seventy, seventy degrees. Beautiful, okay. So that whole set is done. Let's do 22 foot pounds on the 10 mil bolts up top and then this head is finished. Click. Twice click. Yeah, these ones are easy. There we go. Oh no, you guys, my uh, my receiver died from a microphone, so we're back to the uh, old school audio. Sorry, but I'm not gonna stop working just to uh, just charge the battery up. So we're just gonna plow through these real quick, like 90 degrees and then 70 degrees, and then this head is uh, gonna be good to go. Let's, uh, let's get this thing torqued up. First pass, 90, second pass, 70. This makes me appreciate not doing this in the car. Think you know how much of a bear this is to do in the car? Oh, 
89.90. There we go. Couple more left. We're out of here. Couple more. 90 degrees. That was number nine and number 10 all the way in the corner. Ah, 90 degrees. There we go. So let's run this down to 70. Time for the second painful pass. This is the one that hurts. Okay, let's try to turn the engine down some like that. Maybe I can use gravity to assist me. We'll try that. Oh, Laura, could you yes. hold that for me there? Yep. Put your uh, put your foot against that corner down there. No, no, not like that. Not like that. You're wearing flip flops. Yeah. No, do it like this. Oh. It's gonna want to come this way, so you should go there, and then push. No, put your foot on it like this. My foot's not that big. Push. It's gonna come this way though. You need to push it that way. That's what I'm saying. Like this. Yeah, but put your foot higher up on here. No, I got it. I got it. I'm you got gonna... it. Yep. Okay, let's uh, let's do this. Are you ready? I am. Let's do it. Hang on. I gotta get my my chart pulled up. I'm gonna make this fast, okay? Three. Went a little over on that one, but it'll be fine. It's just stretched extra. Seventy. Number five. Seventy. Six. I'm running out of stamina here. Ooh. I got it. We'll get down with it. There we go. Ah, I just got a Charlie horse in my arm. A couple more. I'm gonna have to pull on this next set. I don't think I've got the, the space to hang down on it. Fatigue. No, nah, that's not working. Here, you guys switch me sides. You guys come over here. Woo! I'll come over here. And I'll come over here. You go over there. Thank you, dear. Seventy. Which one was that? That one? Yeah. I lost my screen. Hang on. That was eight. Number nine. Yeah. I don't feel good. Something's not right here. My stance is all wrong. 70 degrees on number nine. And last one, this guy right here. There we go. Ooh. 73 degrees, I'll live with that. Beautiful, okay. So last step, 22 pounds on those top bolts over there. Laura, you're good, you don't have to hold it anymore. Okay. Uh, I think that's gonna bring this uh, section to conclusion. 22 pounds and this is all set. Now, like I said, Dave is uh, going to be putting this engine back in the vehicle. And since uh, Aaron and additional guests are here this week, I'm gonna go ahead and duck out early. And, and I realize I just got back from vacation and whatnot, but I've got some other things to attend to. So I'm gonna duck out early today. And since I have no more uh, vehicles here, work on 
I'm gonna get Dave to uh, grab like the intake manifold and some of the other accessories and uh, get him to bolt these on, get him to bolt this stuff onto this engine uh, while I'm out. So I, I don't know if this is gonna be the last video on this car or if I'm gonna make a, another one. I will make a follow-up and a first start and a test drive on it and everything like that. But I don't know if I'm, but I do not know, excuse me, if I'm going to put in, be putting any other additional components into this engine, I might just uh, go ahead and turn it over to him right now. So guys, that being said, uh, I'm gonna let you guys go and uh, close this one out. I will do such things as always by thanking each and every one of you guys for watching this video. Let me know what you think about this project in the comment section down below. Do not forget to tap that like and subscribe button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a fantastic day. See you guys later in a video in a LS4 rebuild in a transmission.